If you spend any amount of time in leftist circles, you've very likely been sent a link to the World Socialist website before, but I don't think many people are aware of their sort of politics of the group behind that website and their views on sexual abuse. They are a self-proclaimed continuation of the Fourth International, and there's many groups that can claim to be that. Um, the Fourth International was started by Trotsky in response to primarily what he saw as a failure of Stalinism to oppose fascism and Hitler. And the Fourth International fractured and fell apart in the 1950s, and now we have a bunch of organizations that claim to be the one true one. And the ICFI that runs the World Socialist website is no different. The International Committee of the Fourth International, which is really just ran by the SEP in the U.S., like so many uh, leftist parties that claim to be international, they tend to have one section in one country that's really the leaders. Um, and in the case of the World Socialist website, uh, that's the SEP in the United States. Their leader goes by the pen name of David North, and there are several sources reporting that his real name is David Green, who is the owner of Grand River Printing and Imaging, whose workers, as far as I've been able to tell, are not union. Um, they also have millions of dollars in income. This fact was revealed by former member Scott Solomon, according to Bolshevik.org. And this claim seems to come from Scott Solomon posting this on a Usenet news group in 2007. Information in there states that he went to private university, Trinity College. And then some digging from someone I know was able to find this in the Trinity Reporter from winter of 2017 on page 9, stating that David North is the pen name of David Green and the author of this through Mayring Books, and Mayring Books is the publishing arm of the SCP. Someone having gone to a private school does not inherently make them bad, but I think given how often the World Socialist website likes to call opponents capitalists or academics, or not really members of the working class, it feels a bit odd given the upper class academic background of its leader. Regardless, this is not the main reason of making this video, and even if these claims were not true, um, what I'm going to talk about does make the organization bad, in my opinion. Um, as well as their drama with subreddit moderators over it, um, they tend to be rather sensitive to criticism and have written articles when subreddit moderators are mean to them. Uh, and so it's kind of very clear that they take Reddit seriously, um, and their members seem to as well, as a lot of them are very active on Reddit. And to me... How serious can a international organization be if they're spending their time writing articles about small subreddits being mean to them? Um, and one last thing before we get into the main portion of this video, we're going to be talking about sexual abuse. If you don't want to uh, hear about this, please feel free to just leave this video and go watch something else. I didn't enjoy about reading a lot, a lot of this for the video, and I wouldn't blame anyone for not wanting to listen to it. However, I do think people need to know this. So, there's your content warning for the video. Now let's talk about... So, think of any wealthy sexual abusers you can, and the World Socialist website has probably put out an article defending them. They actually brag about it in the article, Meet the Censored. Andre Damon, quote, Your readers who are unfamiliar with the record of the World Socialist website will be relieved to learn they have opposed the Me Too campaign from the start and have defended such figures as Polanski, uh, Louis C.K., and Kevin Spacey, unquote. Now, if you're younger like me, you probably aren't familiar with several of these names, especially figures like Roman Polanski, who I'd never heard of before. So let's dive into some of these people's crimes and how the World Socialist website defends them. Roman Polanski. In 1977, he told a 13-year-old girl and her mother that he would take pictures of her for a photo shoot. Her mother permitted this. During the photo shoot, Polanski got her drunk and pressured her into taking pictures topless as well as giving her methaquilone, um, which is used and acts as a sedative um, and has been used as a date rape drug. He is then accused of raping her. Polanski maintains that it was a consensual relationship. However, children cannot consent. Polanski was 43 and the girl was 13. In addition, she had been drinking and has possibly been drugged. Both actions which would have been pressured by Polanski, a 43-year-old adult male with a 13-year-old girl. And even if she had been an adult, you're talking about someone who was both drunk and possibly on other drugs. In that situation, person is not capable of consenting to sex. 
Polanski would plead guilty and then flee the country in order to not face the charges. Later on, a total of five women, to my knowledge, have come forward saying Polanski raped them. Polanski has admitted and talked about many times his sexual attraction to children, and he admitted to having sex with a 13-year-old girl. That is not a disputed fact. The only thing he disputes is that he drugged her. You can look all this up if you wish, but it's really important to note that Polanski admits to this. He's unashamed of this fact. Um, and I'm going to quote later from his own book where he admits to it. Um, so these are not things that can be dismissed as bourgeois press slander, given he admits to most of the details and what he does deny, I don't think, majorly changes how piece of a shit he is. So the World Socialist website has published dozens of articles in which their own words they defend Polanski. But let's go over a few of them. On May 7, 2018, they published... Quote, the hypocritical, cowardly expulsion of Roman Polanski from the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences. And here they say, quote, this is the latest atrocity attributed to the sexual witch hunt, unquote. They're saying an atrocity is a wealthy celebrity who is an admitted rapist. Like, he would deny, he would say that it was consensual, but we know that a 13-year-old can't consent to sex with, while well, drunk, possibly drugged, with a 43-year-old man. So it's rape. He is, a, he is an admitted rapist. So they are calling it an atrocity to have him removed from the Oscar organization, which is like just a wealthy person's club. They also call it a witch hunt. And I have to remind you that typically when we're talking about witch hunts, we're talking about people being accused of, say, using magic and working with Satan. And these are things that don't exist. Where the thing he is being kicked out for is something he admitted to doing. That is not a witch hunt when you're kicking somebody out for something they admitted to doing. And I'm just still bothered by them calling it an atrocity. There is many things in this world that are happening right now that are atrocities. A wealthy man facing minimal consequences by getting kicked out of a rich person's club is not a fucking atrocity. Anyway, back to their article. Quote, Polanski, 84 years old, has made a number of important films during his career, unquote. See, this is something you notice in all these articles. They present these men as being so fucking important, and somehow that makes it okay. Like, you can do a little bit of rape on the side as long as you make some movies we like. Um, I don't care who he is. I've never, I don't know if I've ever seen any of his movies. Um, I don't care to look them up. Um, he's just some old piece of shit. And making lots of movies doesn't make you a good person. They also bring up his experience with the Holocaust, and someone being the victim of something does not permit them to be a rapist. They got into a bunch of internal drama about the Oscars organization is corrupt. Like, who fucking cares? No regular person cares about these internal dramas of a rich person's club, at least it being something they want from a socialist organization. Internal drama about rich people film clubs is, like, more something you'd expect from trashy magazines at the grocery store. And again, not an international socialist movement, as they claim to be. Which, some of their members that I've talked to actually seem alright. And some of their articles aren't awful. I just question why they would stay with people who have these horrible views. Just leave. Now, let's look at an article released November 23rd titled, quote, Me Too launches fascistic attack on Polanski's film, French word, end quote. Um... Yes, Me Too is now fascistic, I guess, for attacking Polanski and having a movement calling on people to, like, not watch the movie and, I guess, some theaters to, like, drop the movie. Anyway, more from the article. Quote, with the full support of France's banker president, Emmanuel Macron, its supporters are working to brand Polanski as a rapist, end quote. Why does it matter what Macron thinks? Also, brand him as a rapist? No, he admitted to being one. He is an admitted rapist. What I think they're trying to do is saying, look, some of the capitalists don't like this guy. Therefore, if you also hate him, you love capitalism. This is the same thing Democrats do where if you, like, criticize Joe Biden, well, then you must love Donald Trump. It's wrong in that situation, and it's wrong in this situation. Being critical of someone in ways other people have been critical with does not mean you agree with every other person who's ever criticized that person ever. They continue to call Me Too promoting the heritage of fascism, which is nuts. They seem to think that Me Too is some organized group rather than just kind of a vague uh, Twitter hashtag that cropped up where a lot of women talked to, came forward and some men came forward about being abused. They again argue that the claims against Polanski are unsubstantiated, but he admitted to it. 
Well, he might contest some of the facts. He admitted to it in his book. On page 393, he says he had sex with a 13-year-old girl while she was also drunk. The party does not claim that as true as that she was drugged. Um, but whether she was drugged or not drugged, she is still 13. Those are not the facts that he contests, only that she was drugged. Not that he, he a 43-year-old man, had sex with a 13-year-old girl. And in court, she stated that she had been drugged and raped. Just the things that Polanski admits to makes him a rapist. This is not unsubstantiated. He admits to this, just considers it consensual, which is wrong. This is the man that they have well wrote over probably 100 articles talking about. The 105 articles claim uh, came from searching on the website, though when I checked now at the time of recording, um, it only shows 29. I think beforehand the search on their website was finding all the articles that talked about him, but this is actually now when I search his name, just finding the ones where it's listed as like the main tag for the article. However, a Google search of the website comes up with about 500 results for pages referencing Polanski, and now that count probably is double counting, but it's a lot. They've written a lot of articles. Now, I had never heard of Woody Allen either, much in the same way I'd never heard of Roman Polanski until the World Socialist website kept defending him, and so I looked into him. And honestly, I doubt anyone under the age of 40 really knows who either of these people are or have heard of their movies. Woody Allen is known for having been sexually intimate with his then-wife's Maria Farrow's 19-year-old adoptive daughter when he was 44. This caused a custody battle during the events. Dylan Farrow, age 7, accused Woody Allen of molesting them. Allen denies it and argues that this was done by Mia Farrow as a false accusation because she was mad that Woody Allen was dating her daughter. Now, compared to Polanski, this could actually be considered, or it's really a little bit more dubious. Some of the other kids accused the mother of abusing them, actually, and that the 7-year-old was forced to make it up. So this is a bit more mixed and complicated of a situation. Uh, but what is interesting, for all their, the World Socialist websites complaining about censorship, let's talk about the way they reacted to HBO producing a documentary about these claims. Remember, criticism of Polanski's movies and trying to get them pulled for movie theaters and people not to see them, that was fascistic. Now let's see what they say about Woody Allen doing something arguably worse. Quote, Alan V. Farrow has a distinctly sick quality, and though we've repeatedly pointed out, so does the whole sexual misconduct campaign. The level of unreason, hysteria, banality is remarkable. The fact that Alan has never been charged, let alone convicted, of any misconduct does not give the Me Too crusaders who made it and participated in Alan V. Farrow pause for thought. Unquote. So here they argue that he was not charged, and so you can't accuse him. However, Polanski was charged and pleaded guilty in a plea deal. But they argue that can't be used of evidence against Polanski, but they then use him not being charged in court, or Woody Allen not being charged in court, as evidence for you can't accuse him. Kind of hypocritical there. Now, what they don't condemn is Woody Allen's lawsuit to get the documentary pulled due to violations of his copyright. So, not a mention of this. Trying to get movie theaters not to show a movie made by a rapist is fascism. Using the copyright system to shut down a documentary critical of uh, somebody? Well, that seems to be okay to the World Socialist website, because they certainly don't call Woody Allen a fascist. They tend to act like they're just for freedom of speech. Shouldn't these people get to still make movies? But that goes out the window when they try to shut down criticism. And so we have another situation where people's freedom of speech comes off more as they want certain people to have freedom from criticism. Now, someone else they've defended kind of in passing is Louis C.K., and here's a recap of people who might not remember. He was accused of showing his penis and masturbating in front of women who did not consent to it. He said the stories are true, according to this article from NPR. So, we have the same issue with Polanski. He admitted to the accusations. He might have contested a few details, and I'm sure the World Socialist website people would say, well, sometimes confessions are forced. But Louis C.K. is a well-off man. He was never imprisoned. He was never put on trial. And he gets to still keep working in it, the entertainment industry. Um, and now, I guess, at the very least, they don't spend as much time defending him as other people. But I still find that weird. I don't really need to go over everyone uh, at, that they defend. But, you know, they defend other figures like Harvey Weinstein. But I'm going to skip over all those because I think I've made my point. So they have hundreds of articles talking about these things, and maybe they legitimately think these men are innocent, even though two of them admitted to it. 
Maybe the World Socialist website is just really concerned about how unjust the U.S. legal system is and thinks even if people do bad things um, in the U.S. that, you know, the prisons are so fucked up that nobody should go in on them. Um, so surely maybe they've written about what um, kind of became a popular uh, slogan or thing to bring up during the uh, George Floyd protests of 2020. Um, but nope, they've not talked about police or prison um, abolition, not even criticizing it. They just ignored that it was like a slogan of a lot of people, um, which even if you don't necessarily 100% agree with, you would have at least you know thought they would explore it considering they think that None of these men should face any type of punishment whatsoever, even minor things like getting rewards revoked. Um, and, you know, let's talk about how they talk about Black Lives Matter. They, and I quote, uh, say, These social transformations are reflected in the political outlook of the Black Lives Matter movement, which is devoid of any genuine element of social protest or democratic struggle. At Amherst College and Princeton University, protesters have demanded that the school change the names of buildings named after figures who demonstrators say were racist. At Amherst, students are defending that the school officially renounced its namesake, Baron Geoffrey Amherst, an 18th century uh, British Army field marshal. Princeton students are likewise demanding that the school drop the name of Woodrow Wilson School of Public and International Affairs because of the 28th president's racism. The working class is entitled to ask, is this a movement that has a progressive character? Do these demonstrators deserve at least critical support? The answer to both questions is no. These protests are not part of a movement for social equality or civil rights. Rather, they are the typical middle-class character and represent a very familiar and toxic element of bourgeois politics. End quote. So Roman Polanski, worthy of full support, but people protesting cops for shooting black people and lots of other Americans too, they think that's not worthy of support that BLM is somehow capitalist for criticizing police shooting people, I guess. But these actual wealthy elites aren't, it isn't capitalist to defend them, but it is capitalist to defend often working class black people being shot by the police. That's their logic, I guess. I also found this to be funny, quote, none of their demands reflect an attempt to address any of the burning issues affecting billions of workers worldwide. Police violence, war, refugees, and poverty are not mentioned, end quote. I, are they saying BLM doesn't mention police violence? The very explicit naming of this is based on not just the police, but the system of whole not valuing black lives that is directly dealing with police violence. Like the very name of it's a challenge to police and systemic violence. So we can kind of see how full of shit their analysis is if they're willing to call BLM a capitalist movement that doesn't challenge police violence, but somehow defending, again, these wealthy rapists. That's okay. That is challenging police violence somehow. So to tie this all together, the SCP and World Socialist website decide that both, like, and these movements are nebulous. There isn't, like, a leader of either of either like the me too which again was a hashtag um and black lives matter protests have cropped up all over there isn't central leadership of them to criticize it's average people being upset about police violence in their communities so i assume in their view the real working class is wealthy celebrities and not like black people now let's get into some of the views of their members um and their relationship with some of those Reddit drama that I want to briefly touch on. Um, and again, I want to establish the SCP takes Reddit very, very seriously. Uh, whenever one of their articles is removed or banned on a subreddit, they make sure to write an article about it. In 2014, on r socialism, concerns were raised over their apologetics for Roman Polanski, as well as others. World Socialist uh, website members were also very aggressive of spamming the website and links to it all over Reddit. And so the subreddit banned their website. Not all of their members, just the website. Um, and so this was such an affront to them. The editorial board of this international organization felt the need to write an article, which is titled, Reddit Forum Blacklist World Socialist Website. 
Um, you can go read the whole thing if you want. The link is down in the description, but I wanted to highlight uh, this bit. Quote, this is the language and politics of the extreme right. The slanderous charges of apologizing for rape are a smokescreen to conceal the real fact of the matter. The two World Socialist website articles point to the coming together of open reactionaries, the media, human rights posers, and right-wing proponents of identity politics in their defense of the state and its operations. End quote. So they accuse the mods of a subreddit of having the politics of fascists and accuse them of not challenging the state and its operations, which I want to point out in many of their articles defending these celebrities uh, who have done sex crimes. A lot of times they're not defending them against state violence. They're defending them against like mild repercussions of less people watching their movie and other actors not wanting to work with them. That's not state persecution. That's not being given a reward. They also go on to compare this banning of them from the subreddit to Nazis executing Jews, quote, lurid allegations of sex crimes under the rubric of race defilement and blood defilement, I can't say the German words, were commonplace in the anti-Semitic propaganda of Nazi Germany. The Nazi tabloid Der Sturmer featured such charges. Many Jews were tried and executed for alleged rape in connection with alleged sexual relations with German Aryan women. This is the political heritage of the present-day moral crusaders. The targets of recent sex scandals whipped up in the media include many artists, often it be noted Jewish artists, as in the case of Polanski. End quote. Apparently the campaign against admitted rapist Roman Polanski is because he's Jewish. Quote, as for the use of the term socialist, it should be recalled that the Nazis called themselves national socialists. Speaking on behalf of highly privileged section of the middle upper class, these elements are anti-communist, anti-Marxist, pro-imperialist, and intensely hostile to the working class. End quote. I find it very funny that they think the mods of r slash socialist are privileged upper middle class when the World Socialist website, when their leader literally runs a company that doesn't permit his workers to unionize while they have millions of dollars in income. Some of this might be a little bit projecting. I don't necessarily think it's bad to have been to university. I certainly haven't. But, you know, maybe you don't go around calling everybody, you know, privileged and upper class. They're accusing subreddit moderators getting upset at them for apologizing for rapists. They're saying those people are in the political heritage of people who carried out the Holocaust. They're comparing being removed from a subreddit to the Holocaust. I, 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 I don't know what to say in response to that. That is so over the top for not being able to post your articles to one single subreddit. Like, socialists in other countries face prison time, you know, being jailed and violence. It is them being booted from one internet community on one website that is the real tragedy, I guess. And now this isn't the only time they've written articles, times they've complained about being banned. A few years ago for spamming articles and their apologetics got them banned from the Trotskyist subreddits on Reddit, which members of them in another associated newspaper connected for the SCP wrote this article. Moderators of Reddit form Blacklist, the World Socialist website again. And, quote, the most basic level, the anti-democratic measure of blacklisting a website from sharing its material goes against the democratic egalitarian principles of the Internet. Um, a very against its reason of French. Furthering the free flow of information to benefit humanity. And in, in its most extreme form, these socialists are lining up with corporate and state forces that deepen and implement the blacklist against the World Socialist website and other left-wing blogs. While some are engaging in concentrated, energetic campaign to defend online freedom, these shadowy figures are engaging in the most crass acts of censorship. From this, a political balance sheet will be drawn. These reactionary figures and forces will be exposed for the frauds they are, socialist and name only. My only response to this is go touch fucking grass. Like, at the time of this banning, the Trot subreddit that banned them had like 400 subscribers. And their feelings got so hurt by this. They went on this huge tirade and like the, them being banned from this subreddit is some grand battle between good and evil. Also, one of their members in response to this on Reddit posted that the reason Me Too is evil is that it's making men have less sex because they're afraid of women, which, you know, men can have sex with men too. So like, I don't, I don't see how it's women's fault that men aren't getting laid because they could solve that problem with each other. Now, obviously, again, this is Reddit. And the only reason I bring it up is because they take it so seriously. Again, these are usually fairly small subreddits, and this is supposed to be some grand international party fighting for freedom, and they have time to spend time being angry that Reddit moderators of a 400-subscriber subreddit were mean to them. All right, so 
why are they like this? And I've seen some people connect it to Gary Healy and that fraction of the Fourth International, and I do not want to get into the whole history of Trotskyism because uh, um, it's a huge mess. Uh, but Gary Healy's um, party eventually gave him the boot in 1985 due to his former secretary revealing he had sexually abused a bunch of women. North at the end certainly wasn't a friend of Healy, um, but as far as I can tell, he hasn't ever condemned those actions. I mean, he could have somewhere that I just couldn't find, but in his Gary Healy and his place in the history of the Fourth International under Trotskyism betrayed, he states, quote, tolerance herself, which became involved in a counter-revolutionary uprising, end quote, which if we follow the little seven there states, this has to do with referring to Healy's sexual misconduct. And this is the only reference I could find, so he doesn't seem to condemn his conduct here. And before I move on to some other aspects of the World Socialist website's politics, I wanted to talk a little bit about sexual abuse in leftist organizations, because um, it's certainly not something unique to any given organization. Um, and the common excuse that the World Socialist website tries to make is that rape accusations are a tool by the capitalist secret police. So if you listen to them, they'll destroy your organization. And so I guess their solution is to ignore these accusations when they do happen. Uh, and so I wanted to show what some other Trotsky organizations have written about the issue. And to do that, I also want to talk about how the World Socialist website dealt with the collapse of the International Socialist Organization, which was a reasonably large by leftist party standards um, in the United States. In 2019, it was destroyed in part due to accusations of sexual abuse. And it is important to note that too often abuse like this occurs in organizations that have no accountability of the leadership. Alongside the sexual abuse that was covered up, the organization abused its members of color, especially black members. This is what led to the death of the organization. Well, let's take talk about their take on the ISO collapse, which they titled it, quote, factional provocation, middle class hysteria, and the collapse of the international socialist organization, end quote. They ignore the very real issue dealing with the ISO's abuse of minority members. Um, they also basically argue the whole thing was BS, that the sexual abuse scandal, and it was all middle class hysteria. They really like calling people middle class. So as you can see for the World Socialist website, there can never be a legitimate sexual assault, it seems. And people who participated in it or participated in covering up should never face consequences, such as even being removed from leadership of an organization. Uh, except this is exactly what creates the conditions for the explosions of these organizations. Abiding sexual assault is what destroyed them, not attempts to remove the abusers. Unless your position is that in the name of the party, leaders should just get to rape members without consequence, probably should be for people getting removed for doing this sort of thing and holding leaders accountable. So the solution to this is that we need to take abuse seriously in our organization. Um, for a document that shows what I mean, I think you should go read... And it's been some time since I read it, but I recall it was good at the time that I read it. Um, and it is, quote, Our Marxist approach to combating women's uh, oppression and working class organizations by workers' voice. There'll be a link in the description. Now, let's talk about something a little bit different than their defensive rapists, though I guess at least one or two of these guys were rapists, too. Anyway, let's talk about their love of the American founding fathers. So it's not aware of this until I had a friend tell me that a member uh, told him that it was unfair to criticize the American Revolution for not abolishing slavery because the material conditions didn't permit it. In an article titled, quote, Opposition Mounts to San Francisco School Board Approval of Racialist Renaming of Schools, the renaming of schools on the basis of racialist politics and the falsification of history must be rejected as an attack on historical truth. And the immensely progressive and democratic legacy of the Founding Fathers in Lincoln and the world revolutionary significance of the American Revolution and Civil War. The former gave the world the Declaration of Independence, which declared all men were created equal. The Founding Fathers here are presented as meaningless by district officials, and these figures are ripped for their historical context and slandered as garden variety racists. End quote. The American Revolution sure declared and upheld all men were created equal. Uh, which is why, you know, people weren't enslaved and, you know, everyone could vote, not just landed uh, white men. Also, weren't they accusing other people of backing the American state while well, they're defending its very creation and it in an era where only white landowners could vote and where it was legal to buy and sell human beings? Also, no, the Founding Fathers aren't garden variety racists. I actually agree with them here. They're actually worse than garden variety racists, given that the Founding Fathers literally maintain slavery and own slaves. 
At least a modern garden variety racist is not literally a plantation owner raping his slaves like some of the founding fathers did. And some of their excuse for this is, well, white people were slaves too. Quote, what Americans would today call white people continued to be subjected to slavery right up until the 1800s. Between about 1500 and 1700, some 2.5 million slaves from the Black Sea, overwhelmingly Eastern Europeans, passed through Istanbul, further west in the Mediterranean world, according to Ohio State University historian Robert Davis, as many as 1.25 million Europeans were captured by Arab corsairs and take it into slavery in North Africa. Between 1500 and 1800, precisely the same centuries as the rise of the transatlantic African slave trade, entire villages and locations as far away as Iceland were depopulated. Europeans themselves also enslaved people who today they would call white. End quote. They also claimed the founding fathers had set up a system to remove slavery peacefully. And that, quote, in the U.S., slavery might have withered away peacefully as the fathers hoped had it not been for the invention of the cotton gin by Eli Whitney, quote, anyone with any knowledge of American history knows what bullshit the equality the founding fathers preached was. It was nominally the equality of white landowning men. Also, I don't know about all the facts of some of what they claim, but because it doesn't really matter. Just because some other people were enslaved, it does not make slavery elsewhere okay or less bad. It is up there with some of the worst things humans have ever done to each other. It's something truly awful, and I feel weird in the need that I have to point this out. In conclusion, I hope you found this information useful. I really, truly find it gross to the extent that they defend these people, and I don't think we should just let this happen among, you know, people who are nominally part of the same left-wing movement as us, in theory, get away with this without criticism. Now, just a small channel update, but I have deleted my Twitter account. Um, I had used Mastodon long before I used Twitter. I made the Twitter to kind of help the channel a little bit, but given all the goings-on at Twitter, um, I don't want to have to have an account over there anymore. Um, broadly speaking, the privacy is better over on Mastodon anyway, and I don't quite like e the idea of Elon Musk having my phone number. I'll have a uh, link in the description to my account over on Mastodon, and I'll have it up here on screen. If you want to follow me from somewhere in the Mastodon network, you know, you don't have to be on the same server as me on Mastodon. Any account can generally follow any other account, unless the whole instance has been banned for, like, letting Nazis on it. I promise my next video will be more directly about Soviet history. It's probably going to be a response video that I started working on last year, and isn't really relevant anymore, but I just can't let it go. Um, I haven't got really much done this year due to being sick and putting all my energy into maintaining my employment. Um, so I really haven't had time to do videos, and that's why not not really a whole lot's been made. This video itself was actually written last year. I just never recorded it because I just got sick and didn't have the energy, and I'm kind of glad to finally get it out there.